So I ended up, uh, at the uh, anthropology prof professor was doing this big project on uh, um, Kree Ojibwe Indians with a very high incidence, he thought, 60 cases of congenital dislocation of the hip. And I thought that would be very interesting to look at the impact of uh, a disability on people who are living in a very unurban uh, environment, the Indian Reserve. It turned out to be a major epi epidemiological study when I wasn't able to focus where I wanted to focus. But it also gave me a tremendous insight into medical anthrop anthropology and the impact of, of people going back into their own environments. And it got me very conscious of an area which we now say something about to the students, but we weren't doing then. How do people cope in their homes? How do they cope on the farm that they go back to? If they go back in Canada to the far north, can they manage in that environment? And we were sending people, we were giving them, yes, they could walk in a gym, but it was almost before getting them to go up and down curbs, get on and off buses, be able to walk on a gravel road as well as on the gym floor, be able to manage slopes, those kinds of things. So the rehab was just sort of starting to sort of take, really look at, can the patient manage in his own environment? Can he go back to his work environment? Can we start rehabilitating patients from day one to go back into their work environment? There was a lady up in uh, Sandy McLaren in Yorkshire who did some of the very early stuff on mines and had mine shafts and and trucks, etc., and all these kinds of things. And um, Louis, uh, I think Rothberg was his name, surname anyway, in, that's in Johannesburg had a mines hospital we had for, for the Africans where he did the same kind of thing. And so I learned about the hopeless. I mean, people would go back north with Oxford shoes and, and braces and they would be completely immobilized within their houses and there somebody lifted them couldn't manage it in the snow and ice. So when I finished the master's degree, I intended to go back to teaching physiotherapy. For one, I needed the money. Not because, you know, I'm going to give great things back to physiotherapy, but I needed to get some money and live like a normal person instead of a broke graduate student. However, everybody kept on saying, you know, where are you going to do your PhD? So I ended up by doing a PhD in medical sciences. And that qualification had Helen Hitzler, one of the one of the mainstays of American physical therapy, uh, who had started the first PhD program at the University of Southern California, and desperately needed PhD qualified physiotherapists to be on her faculty. And she located me and lured me down there for, I said, two to three years, but ended up being down there for eight years. In the interval, I was coming back to New Zealand about every four years, seeing my parents and seeing some of my friends. And I came back to several conferences and I was an invited speaker on one occasion and I'd bring posters that I, I had taken to the American conferences. And I got, uh, they tried to get me to come back to the Dunedin School on two or three occasions, but for mainly the reasons that the faculty there were doing no research, they weren't properly in the university, it wasn't a degree program, they were teaching an abnormal number of hours, and it would have almost been professional suicide. I suppose I could have done things to help New Zealand physiotherapy, but I think... In a, in a funny kind of way, I did help New Zealand physiotherapy by being away and sort of coming back every now and again because I was able to talk to people about the various models of education and uh, I think some of them probably sort of said, well, this is where we've got to go and helped promote it there. I don't think I'd have done the research that I achieved in Canada, made the connections that I did there had I been here. It's too isolated, or was particularly then. Before the internet, before email, uh, a faculty member was lucky 
if they ever went overseas to a conference, unless they were representing the New Zealanders with WCPT, and then they might happen to go, or they used their own money to go, they wouldn't have gone to conferences.